Howdy folks, this is Richie, and I am here once again to talk about my impressions of the Mists of Pandaria expansion for World of Warcraft. Now, I've had about a week to mull over the different information that they slammed us with. There was a ton of information, and I think I have more to say about various topics. Uh, the first thing I'd just like to get into real quick is uh, I spoke fairly vehemently about, uh, last time about the fact that it just didn't have this kind of uh, the announcement didn't have this epic feel, and I wasn't overly imp impressed with it. Um, and I ca just wanted to clarify it and kind of, not really clarify, but just, just give more thoughts into why I felt that way. Um, I think that in previous expansions, the trailers and the announcements, you know, they just had this, this epic feel and this epic theme to them. For example, you know, for Wrath of the Lich King, you know, it's all, it was all about, um, you know, the Lich King, Arthas, you know, you've been, hearing his name forever, and he's a big, big character in, in the World of Warcraft universe, you know, and, and now you're going to go to Northrend, and he's got a continent completely under his control, and you've got to take the fight to him and try to, try to take him out before, you know, his undead hordes, you know, take over the world. You know, that's got an epic field, not a field, has an epic feel to it. Cataclysm, you have Deathwing breaking the world, destroying all the zones that you've grown to, to know and love, and, you know, now we, we've got to fight this huge menace. That's another uh, epic feel to it. Um, the Mists of Pandaria, they just, it fo the trailer and everything focused so much on the fact that, wow, look, we've got this new race of panda people, and wow, look, we're going to introduce this new monk class, and that's where most of the focus was. And I think that's where they kind of maybe, maybe lost, uh, um, lost some people. Because if you weren't into the fact that there's pandas and a monk class, then there wasn't really much there for you to get excited about. Now, I'm not saying that every expansion needs to have a big boss attached to it. I actually like the fact that they're they're going back to like what they did in original WoW, and there was no there was no super villain that influenced everything. Um, I, I think that's I think that's good. It, it, it's it, it's going to be interesting to see what they cook up with. Now, obviously, there's still going to be bad guys. There's still going to be you know things for you to fight. There's going to be you know raid bosses there's it's going to still have all that it just you just don't need one guy who's like the poster boy for this expansion um so i i don't think that the that they that they needed to do that to make it feel epic but but the trailer should have kind of you know, mentioned some of these bad guys or shown some of these bad guys or, and showed some of the combat or maybe some of the raid or stuff. And, it, and to be fair, maybe Blizzard wasn't ready, you know, for all of that. They, they definitely had a lot of information to show at BlizzCon for this expansion, but, you know, maybe that kind of stuff wasn't ready. But to, to put out the trailer that they did where it, it, it really didn't show, uh, it might not have shown, shown what the expansion is all about in the best light. You know, for example, they, they were talking a lot about the fact that they want to bring the war back to Warcraft. And, and a huge theme for this expansion is just going to be the Alliance and the Horde's hatred for each other just reaching a boiling point. I mean, we're going to really start to, to see these two clash. I mean, there's, there's rumors all over the forums. I, th I think they actually said something at BlizzCon about the fact that the Horde is going to, going to attack and maybe even destroy Theramor. I mean, what? You're gonna you're gonna attack Lady Jaina Proudmore's you know hometown? I mean, that's just gonna get people really fired up. So if there's that kind of like escalation happening, and we're gonna actually use Pandaria as the battlefield, um, then yeah, this can feel really epic. They just didn't show that in the trailer. You know, I want to you know if the, I, I think they're gonna throw a lot of heroes from Azeroth's you know past and a lot of heroes like Lady Jaina and maybe Thrall again and Garrosh and Varian are going to, you know, they're going to go crazy. This war that they've had to put off and put off and put off because there were bigger things to worry about, you know, this is going to be, this can be very exciting. Um, they didn't show that though. And I think that's where, where a lot of people kind of, uh, you know, tuned out when, when they just saw this peaceful, serene panda setting. Like I said, I still personally am not thrilled about Kung Fu Panda the MMO. I, I, I don't like, I don't like the fact that they, uh, you know, different, aren't trying to differentiate themselves from the Kung Fu Panda franchise. You know, I've already said a lot on that topic, but I do feel a little bit better now that I've actually processed, uh, what this expansion is going to be about. You know, there are going to be cool boss fights. There's going to be cool story. It is going to feel epic. Just the trailer and the announcement wasn't. Okay. For example, one of the the, the big things about the uh, the Pandaria land is that the negative energy actually manifests itself in, into a physical form called the Sha. And the Sha are these like demonic spirits, basically that feed off of you know your hatred and negative energy. It's kind of like Ghostbusters too. You know. 
the, the, the evil, the, the slime, the goo stuff that they get covered in. And, you know, if you say bad things around it, it grows and grows and expands. That's the Shah, basically. Um, so th th there's this whole thing, and it's, it's cool because the Horde and the Alliance are going to go to Pandaria. They're going to start warring with each other. Probably the this, this Shah is just going to bubble up everywhere, and it's going to be all our fault, and it's going to be awesome because we're going to have to clean it up. And that means we're going to fight some bosses, and that means they're going to have really cool pieces of loot for some inexplicable reason. But we're going to pick them up and use them. It's going to be cool. So anyway, that's, that's my feeling on that. Um, it could have been a more epic announcement, but if you really step back and think about it, you may not be into pandas, but if you still love raiding in World of Warcraft, it's still going to be raiding, and it's going to feel epic and cool. Trust us. Wait till you get more information. Give it a chance. Maybe. And if not, oh well, I tried. Another topic that they went over uh, during the BlizzCon announcement was that they're completely shattering the talent system and uh, rebuilding it from the ground up. Now, if you remember before uh, uh, Cataclysm, the, the talent trees were a mess. There were these huge, monstrous things where you can spend tons and tons of points, but there was very little choice uh, that you had because th there was cookie-cutter builds. I mean, there were certain talents that you absolutely had to take, otherwise you were doing it completely wrong. Um, and there was very little uh, variance between specs. You couldn't be creative. You had to just look up your spec online because that was decided by the mathematical gurus as the, the, the most optimal spec. And that's what you had to spec your character as. Um, and then in Cataclysm, they really wanted to change that. So they pared down they, uh, a lot of the talent trees. They took a lot of the filler out, and they took a lot of the mandatory talents out. And they just gave you those things for free just for choosing that spec. And... This helped a, a, a bit. I mean, most specs have one to three, maybe even four points where it's not a cookie cutter spec. You know, you still have your cookie cutter, but you have a couple points left over where you can kind of make s some choices. The problem is none of those choices were, you know, ever something to get all excited about. Uh, uh, you know, the, the, the choices were, were pretty limited. Um, but at least they got rid of some of the junk. They included some things in the core talents, which is, which is a pretty big deal. Um, it just, it's just more elegant. Uh, but they didn't overall succeed at revamping them to really make the talent trees feel awesome. So for Miss of Pandaria, what they are doing is they're basically scrapping the whole talent point system. They are, they're giving you even more things just for choosing a spec. The way it breaks down is this. You will have certain abilities that are now going to just be part of your core class. All specs will get these abilities. Then you're going to choose a spec in your class. And you're going to get certain abilities just based on that choice of which spec you are. Now, these are things that the other specs won't get, but you, you will get because you decided to be a DPS or a healer or a tank or what, you know, whatever spec that you choose. And then the rest of uh, what differentiates you are, are how you spend your talent points in this new talent tree. Now, the talent tree is only six different levels. You will make six choices every 15 levels. Okay, the first one being at 15, the last one being at 90, uh, you will make a, a choice. Um, now, the choice is between three different abilities on each tier. And the tier and the choice is going to be like uh, similar things. For example, you might have a tier which are just all kinds of like defensive cooldowns, something that helps you stay alive in one shape or form. And one might be throw a damage shield on yourself and somehow one might be, uh, you know, that you take less damage over time. I'm sorry, excuse me, I got <laughs> piece of dust or something flew in my throat, and one might be um, I don't know your 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 underwear protects you f for five seconds. I, I don't know. <laughs> Just that was really dumb. So so the thing is, you you get to choose one of three abilities that offer some sort of protection, and they're, you're kind of like choosing between apples and apples. So that there's no clear-cut choice. This is if they do it correctly. There should be no clear-cut choice. You just It's a personal preference thing, and these things should have a big kind of impact. So that it doesn't matter that if you're a healer, a tank, or a DPS, you, you're going to get one of these def defensive kind of cooldowns, and you just kind of pick which flavor you think you want to. And if they constantly make each tier be a meaningful choice where you really can choose any of the three and there's not one that's considered best for your spec, then I think that this is going to be a really great system and you're not going to have a cookie cutter build. You know, not every rogue, not every combat rogue is going to, to have the same abilities. Uh, I think that's awesome. But there's a big if. Okay, that's if they make these things apples to apples. Uh, I, I watched the panel where they kind of compared some of these abilities, and in some, some cases it seemed 
it seemed like they really were meeting their goal. It was like, wow, you know, that is a hard choice between those three abilities. You know, that's going to be a really cool choice. But there were others where it was like, well, the damage spec's definitely going to take that one because it gives them a damage boost. And, you know, and the tank would definitely want that because that's just a better survivability, you know, ability. Sur survive a sur survivability ability? Survive. It's just a better survive ability. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, they really have to nail this if it's going to work. If they nail it, it's going to be a really good design decision. People are going to love it. And even though it's only six choices, I know some people have a problem with that. I only get to make six choices. If there's six really meaningful choices and they give you a badass ability and you can really customize however you want to play it and not just read a form and pick a spec out, then yes, yeah, six choices is enough. If it still has that cookie cutter feel, then no. This talent system will not work. It doesn't matter at all. Uh, I think they have their work cut out for them because I could I could see it already. There are some specs and on some classes that this just works really elegantly for. for. It, it's really neat. But then there, like I was reading the Druid ones, and oh my gosh, it was just like, uh, you know, here's an ability. It's called like uh, Moss of the Life. I don't even know if that's 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 probably not one of them. That's definitely not one of them. Moss of Life? Who would pick that? But anyway, look, Moss of Life, and it would be like, yeah, you, the tank, you grow moss on your fur, and, you know, and, and it says the healer, if you're a healer, you, you heal with the power of moss, and if you're a DPS, you throw moss at people. So it's like every one of the abilities had to be broken down into healing, tanking, and, you know, DPS, you know, and every single ability had these huge long tooltips, and it just, it was, it was confusing, is what it was. So, the druid one was just, like, kind of out there. Then again, I don't play a druid, so maybe it's just confusing because I'm dumb. You get the idea. It, it, it has, they have to do their homework, they have to nail this for it to work. Uh, I think that the design choice, I think the structure of it is sound from a design perspective. Uh, it's just, uh, the, the devil is in the details. Will this, uh, Will this succeed or will this crash and burn? We will have to keep our eye on it. The good news is they had a lot of work prepared for BlizzCon. I mean, they actually had a panel where they said, all right, we're going to go through every single class, except for the monk. We're going to go through every single class and show you every single choice all the way down. And it gave, it, it was really smart to do because it gave the community all of this information you know, months and months before the, the release of the expansion. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow people to analyze this and give them tons and tons and tons of feedback on forum posts before they get to set anything in stone. So it, I think that was brilliant. You know, they might get a ton of negative feedback. They might get some positive feedback. But they're getting feedback from this, and, that, and that's what they really needed. So I'm glad that they pushed out that much information about this so that it has a chance to succeed. Another thing I didn't cover last week was the announcement of the World of Warcraft Annual Pass. Now, this thing is a stroke of marketing genius. What this is, is if you commit to paying for a World of Warcraft sub, uh, subscription for the next year, it's a year from whenever you sign up, then you will get the following things. You will get a, uh, a mount, a Diablo th uh, 3 themed mount for World of Warcraft. It is called Tyrael's Charger. It is a flying mount. It looks pretty. The, you will get a automatic beta invite to the Mists of Pandaria beta test. And you will get a free copy of Diablo 3. That's right, free copy of Diablo 3. It's a digital version. <laughs> it's a digital virgin. It is a digital... <laughs> what is a digital virgin? Uh, I don't think we want to know. It is, <laughs> it is a digital version of the game. That's that's amazing. So what what does this do exactly? Um, I think it's I think it's a genius move because uh, a if you're someone who's just going to play the crap out of World of Warcraft and you know that you love the Mists of, Mists of Pandaria expansion announcement and you know you're probably gonna be playing paying paying and playing for the next year or so then it's a no brainer. You just get free stuff. You're getting free stuff. You get a free awesome game. You get a free mount. You get free beta access to the expansion that you're looking forward to anyway. So in that aspect, it's kind of like a Blizzard's way of you know thanking those people for you know just hey here have some free stuff. Thanks for supporting us all these years. Um, if you are, and there's probably tons of people who are we're thinking about that 
you know, WoW is kind of coming to an end for them. Uh, you've got Star Wars The Old Republic coming out on December 20th. You've got Guild Wars 2 coming out sometime early-ish next year. You've got all these single-player games like Skyrim coming out, um, Saints Row the Third, Call of Duty, Battlefield 3 is already out, Batman Arkham City is already out, unless you're playing, waiting for the PC version. <sighs> Next year, you've got Kingdoms of Amalur. There's just there's so many games. Oh, uh, Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. I mean, the, the games that are coming out in the next few months are just insane. So there's probably uh, you know, a contingent of World of Warcraft subscribers that are like, you know what, I'm going to play through Cataclysm. 4.3 is probably coming out soonish. Um, I'm going to beat Deathwing's ass, and then I'm going to cancel my account for a while. And, you know, maybe I'll come back to it sometime at some point, but, you know, for now I'm done. You know, there's probably people saying that, but now with this announcement, it kind of gets you to rethink that and say, you know what, maybe I should, you know, sign up for this year because I get all this other stuff. So it, I think it's a, the perfect time to kind of for them to put this kind of promotion out there to try to grab people and hold on to them for as long as they can. You know, and there's going to be people like me who pay for a World of Warcraft subscription six months at a time. And, you know, because it's cheaper that way. But what, what happens is uh, all that game time counts. Like, if you're already paid from now until, like, March, you know, and you make your commitment today, even though you've already paid through March, you still only have to continue your subscription to next October, and uh, that's the end of your commitment. So, you know, part of your commitment might already be paid for. All right, and for those of you who are looking forward to getting the Diablo 3 Collector's Edition, um, you will buy that separately. And if you sign up for the WoW Annual Pass, what you do is you enter in your Collector's Edition code saying that you went and bought this. And what they're going to do is they're going to give you four months of paid time free onto your World of Warcraft account. And that does count against your commitment. Um, so it's basically, it's around 60 bucks or so, so they're basically giving you the cost of the original game. You still have to pay for whatever is an addition for the collector's edition, but they're giving you some of the money back, so it works for people who are interested in the collector's edition like me, because who doesn't want a Soul Stone USB preloaded with Diablo 2 that fits in a nice little Diablo skull holder? Who doesn't want that? I want that. So that's going to wrap up today's discussion. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed it. As usual, please leave a question or a comment in the comments field below. And click on the subscribe link so that you can be notified when future videos are released. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe, please. Help support my channel. I appreciate it. Um, as usual, you can also reach me on Twitter at Richie Procopio. Um, I will update that on a pretty regular basis about all kinds of things video game related. You can also follow me on, uh, actually you can add me to your circle if you want to be technical, on Google+. Plus. That's uh, gplus.to slash bogotter. So you can check me out in those places too. Thanks so much for watching and until next time.